It's a mildly chilly but still pleasant November 2002 morning in China's Guangdong province. A local farmer tends to his crops when he crosses the path with one of China's most adorable animals, the masked palm civet. A weasel-like animal, the masked palm civet is unique to Southeast Asia and ubiquitous throughout the land, much like the common raccoon in North America. Unknown to this farmer, though, this close encounter with this particular civet has become a deadly one. As the farmer breathes in the fresh fall air, a few stray particles work his way into his lungs. Hiding amongst those airborne particles are a few viruses, and while these viruses have infected civets for millennia, today all that is about to change, with perhaps the world's worst case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. This Chinese farmer has just breathed in the only known mutation of what will become the SARS virus that allows it to infect human beings. From this one stray breath, the world will be rocked by a modern pandemic that will kill hundreds. The farmer will be dead in a matter of days, his corpse laid up in the same hospital bed he checked himself into after having extreme difficulties breathing. The virus within him, however, remained very much alive, even as doctors inspected his corpse for a cause of death and remained unable to identify one other than mysterious acute respiratory illness. The virus would spread from person to person, some it had little to no effect on, and was written off as a mild flu or cold. Others, it would prove fatal. The Chinese government very quickly realized that something was extremely wrong in the small province outside of Hong Kong. Sending in government investigators, they quickly realized that they were dealing with a new and very contagious disease. Yet, in a bid to prevent a panic, they refused to alert the World Health Organization and use their control over the state-run media to block out any information to the public. The death toll, however, continued to rise, and slowly Canada's Global Public Health Intelligence Network, a global monitoring system that scours media for possible pandemic outbreaks in order to stop them in their tracks, gathers evidence that something is very wrong and happening on the other side of the Chinese media blackout. The evidence is slow to be gathered, though, due to Chinese censorship. But finally, on December 5th, the Canadians have given enough evidence to the World Health Organization that it submits a formal request for the information to the Chinese government. At first, the Chinese Communist Party sits silent, until a second request six days later is filed. Canada's Global Public Health Intelligence Network is meant to stop the outbreak of diseases before they become pandemics, and so far it has been very successful. Yet there's little it could have done to stop what came next, thanks to Chinese censorship. At the end of January, a fish seller suffering from acute respiratory problems checked himself into the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hospital in Guangzhou. Before dying, he became SARS's first super-spreader, infecting an approximate 30 doctors and nurses with the strange new disease. One of those infected would be a doctor named Liu Jianlun, who would go on to spread the disease to Hong Kong. And once the disease reached Hong Kong, the worst consequence that the Chinese government had fought so hard to prevent would come to pass. The mystery disease would go global. Dr. Jian Lun would travel to Hong Kong to attend a family gathering. As one of the world's most populated cities, Hong Kong offered no shortage of new hosts for the deadly disease. And as Jian Lun fell ill, he had already done his job as a super spreader. As Jian Lun lay dying in a Hong Kong hospital, the disease was already on its way to Vietnam, Canada, Taiwan, and beyond. Before being contained by the end of the summer 2003, SARS would infect 8,273 people around the world, killing 775 of them. They gave this disease a mortality rate of 9.6%, making it one of the deadliest modern epidemics. These numbers may not seem impressive, but that's only because of the massive global response to the epidemic and the incredible efforts of physicians around the world to discover the disease and quarantine it. In a way, SARS was a test of humanity's ability to respond to a global pandemic, and had the disease been more virulent, it's likely it would have failed that test thanks to the Chinese government's censorship. The new coronavirus outbreak bears many similarities to SARS, and in fact, the two diseases are in essence the same, as they both come from the family of coronaviruses. Yet, while the mortality rates are still unknown due to a lack of sample size and us still being in the opening days of the new pandemic, it's clear that the disease is deadly. Initially, only the elderly and young were thought to be at risk until in mid-January, a perfectly healthy Chinese teenager died from the disease. In just the last few days alone as we write this script, the death toll has skyrocketed from 50 to 81, after initially casualties being limited to just a few a day. This means that the virus is infecting more people faster and is spreading around the world at an exponential rate. 
If the death toll continues to climb at such an incredible rate, the new Wuhan virus will be an order of magnitude more lethal than SARS ever was. Humanity may be facing the first serious risk to global health since the Spanish flu outbreak that killed millions after the end of World War I. While SARS took months to spread from rural China to the rest of the world, the Wuhan virus was first identified in the major city of Wuhan. And from there, in less than a month since the outbreak began, there are already 40 cases confirmed in a dozen other countries, with five now here in the US. We are more than sure that as the virus continues to spread, by the time this script is live and you're watching this, all of those figures will have grown exponentially. While the Wuhan virus attacks the body in much the same way as SARS, it's the ease of infection that's proving to make it far deadlier than SARS ever was. China is far more interconnected with the rest of the world than it was in 2002. With more international airports and flights across the country, China's rapid modernization has also greatly increased the number of international visitors to the interior parts of the country, as opposed to just the major port cities as was the case back in 2002. Basically, China is far more connected to the world than it ever was, and while it was quick to alert the World Health Organization this time over its latest outbreak, there was little that could be done before the disease was already on its way to the rest of the world. To contain the outbreak, China has increased the number of quarantine cities from 13 to 17, a move that affects over 50 million Chinese citizens. The government has mobilized both the civilian medical community and its military in a massive undertaking to fight the spread of the virus, and two brand new hospitals are being built at a rapid pace in two of the worst affected zones, set to be completed in a matter of weeks. In the US, cases have been confirmed in California, Arizona, Illinois, Washington State, and Texas. Dozens of cities across the nation are now screening patients who are showing symptoms that are consistent with those of the Wuhan virus. As of this writing, two new patients in Virginia are believed to be infected. Europe has not been spared the virus, and recently two cases are confirmed in France. Just hours after the initial report, a third case was confirmed. Though the list continues to grow daily, confirmed Wuhan cases have come from Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Nepal, Malaysia, France, the US, and Australia. What makes the Wuhan virus especially dangerous is the fact that it's contagious even during its incubation period, unlike the SARS virus. This means that the virus can still infect people even before the carrier is showing any symptoms, something that makes identifying and quarantining the virus early on almost impossible, as it takes up to two weeks for an infected carrier to start feeling sick. That person could be spreading the disease around them for 14 days before realizing they've been infected. This was impossible with SARS, which was not contagious during its incubation period, and makes the Wuhan virus a far greater threat than SARS ever was. As the world moves to contain the disease, the American CDC has been working on a field test that can diagnose the virus early on, and hopes to be able to export the equipment soon to the rest of the world. What is clear is that we're all in this together, and petty national differences have thankfully been set aside as the world gears up to stop the death toll from the Wuhan virus from climbing any higher.